Hey there, in today's video, I wanna share some ideas on how you can create spaceships by sketching them out in Photoshop and then generating a colored version using stable diffusion. It's a great way to bring your ideas to life with artificial intelligence. Here's a list of popular spaceship types, shuttle, freighter, fighter, cruiser, and so on. Feel free to pause and read through all the details. To make the design more believable, it's also a good idea to do some research. For example, um, here's a list of spaceship components. When you sketch your ideas, consider including features like a cockpit and maybe some weapon systems, depending on the type of spaceship you're designing. I've also included a list of design considerations to help you create better spaceships. While I'm designing the spaceship in this video just for fun, if you're planning to create one for a game or a movie, you might want to consider all kinds of details to better tell the story. Uh, I'm creating a square document in Photoshop, but you can do this step on any sketching software. I'm using a, a Wacom tablet connected to my uh, desktop. And for the sketches, I'm using a hard brush. Uh, there are different types of sketches you can do, and one of them is by creating silhouettes. When creating silhouettes, you focus on contours and form using simple shapes. With the hard brush, you outline the shapes and then use the eraser to refine and add details like holes or other parts of the spaceship. This process only takes a few minutes of your time. In a previous video, someone commented on why you keep drawing when you can generate many designs from prompts. However, relying solely on prompts doesn't give you full control. While you can generate thousands of designs, they may not align with your specific ideas. By guiding the AI with your sketches, photos, and other references, you can achieve the shapes and forms you desire, making the AI a tool to help bring your vision to life. Next, you'll navigate to the text to image feature in Stable Diffusion Forge UI. Here, you'll enable Control Net and paste or upload your sketch. Make sure to check Pixel Perfect and select Canny for both control type and preprocessor. For the model, choose Koya Control Lite XL Canny. I've utilized this setup in previous videos, so you can refer to those for more details. Um, I'm using the Stable Diffusion Model Juggernaut X version 10. When crafting the prompt, describe the spaceship, its components, um, colors, and add a black background. Um, these are the settings I'm using. Then um, hit Generate to get the first generation based on the sketch. If you're not satisfied with the result, you can generate again, adjust the prompt, or tweak the control net settings. Adding lights in the prompt can enhance the look, but it can make removing the background more challenging. You also have the option to change colors. For instance, if you want to swap the orange accents for cyan or red, you can create similar ships with different color schemes. In this case, I'll remove the lights and um, add some green accents instead. As you can observe in uh, the canny map, the result closely resembles the sketch maintaining its contours. To upscale the image, you can use the high-res fix to increase its size. Um, alternatively, you can send it to image to image and adjust the maximum width and height while setting the denoise value to 0.35 to achieve a larger image. For an even larger image, you can send it to uh, extras using the designated button. Here, I use the DATX2 upscaler uh, with a resize value of two. However, note that this process may take some time and um, can consume a significant amount of RAM. Finally, here is the result of the upscaled image. In Photoshop, you can further refine the image by cleaning it up or removing the background you also have the option to sketch new elements or remove existing ones. For instance, you can quickly sketch a green flame and by using that painted image in the image to image tab, you can obtain a, a better looking flame that fits the design seamlessly. Uh, later, you can mask it back in, in Photoshop or um, explore new designs incorporating that flame. Another type of sketch you can create is with lines, similar to sketching with a pencil on paper. The advantage of using Photoshop is that you can utilize symmetry, eliminating the need to draw both left and right sides. Additionally, you have the ability to undo and sketch much faster. I typically start with a rough sketch referencing the silhouette. It's crucial in design to recognize something solely from its silhouette, so the focus is on creating appealing shapes. Later, you can add more details and uh, make it functional. 
I typically lower the opacity of that layer and then overlay uh, more controlled lines on top to create line art. This process is quite relaxing for me. I enjoy adding and removing lines and dots, um, experimenting with what could work. It's almost meditative. Um, you should give it a try. With practice, you can improve your skills and have fun exploring different possibilities. Then in the text to image section, you paste or upload that sketch into the control net area, enable Canny, Pixel Perfect, and select the Koya model. You can use a similar prompt to the first spaceship, but this time emphasize the top view. I've noticed that with this sketch, I tend to get better results. It seems to work well with symmetrical designs and in the top view perspective. For the preprocessor, you can also choose to invert instead of using Canny. Here's how it reads the sketch with Canny. Um, and if I generate again with invert, this is how it interprets the sketch. You can also try none, but in my experience, it didn't work as well, depending on the sketch. Adding lights is an option, but they don't always appear where they should. It's often better to paint them and then use image to image to have more control. Um, you can also introduce another color into the lights to uh, make it more interesting, like adding some blue lights. For the last spaceship, I want to design one that fits my YouTube thumbnail. This time, I'll sketch with colors to have even more control over where the colors appear and the shape of the spaceship. I'll use two main colors, emerald green and orange for accents. You can also create a line art and then color it, but make sure there's enough contrast between colors. I once tested a sketch where parts of the design were missing because the transition between colors was too subtle and uh, Kenny didn't capture all the contours and lines. Uh, the better the sketch, the more accurate the generation, although sometimes you can still get away with a rough sketch. This time, since I have colors, I'll use image to image. Um, I'll add the sketch and a text prompt describing it. Um, I want the spaceship to be placed in a dark hangar with an orange cockpit and some cannons added. I'll see if it can capture all those details. I'm using a width of uh, 1280 and a uh, height of 768 because those numbers are divisible by 64. I wanted to use 720, but it doesn't work when control net is active for denoise strength. I'll use 0 0.75. Don't forget to enable control net with Canny and select the model before hitting generate. Um, I've got some interesting results. I'll generate a few more times until I find one that I really like. Then I'll drag the result back to image to image. Uh, this time I'll disable Canny, use a denoise strength of 0 0.5, and change the size to full HD. Now I have a full HD spaceship image. I'll also try another one with a lower denoise strength like 0 0.4, and this one seems to work just fine for me. Back in Photoshop, I added the image to, to check how it looks. Uh, there are some distracting lights, so I quickly painted over them with a dark brush similar to the background. I added the sketch back to image to image, and um, I generated again to get another version that blends the colors better. Now it seems to work just fine. After finishing the video, I got some cleaner results using the same sketch and prompt along with these settings. What I did extra was to add an art style for 3D, like hard surface in this case. Then once you find one you like, you drag it back to image to image so Canny can see even more details. Generate again until you get one that you're happy with. If you learned something from this, leave a like. Thank you, have a great week, and have fun with AI.